Shalom and welcome. For God must be known. It's a common saying that knowledge is power. But without the adequate knowledge of God, we are indeed powerless. On God on TV, showing on STEM at TV, we will be bringing God closer to you and you back to God. And I will be your host, Aladdin Aladdin Joshua. God bless you. Shalom and welcome to another episode of God on TV showing on STEMA TV. I am your host, Aladinika Oladili Joshua. It's good to have you here with us, and today we are going to be talking about the believer and worship. And for this discourse, I have with me in the house a worshiper, um, and I'm going to allow her to actually introduce herself to us now. Thank you, Mark. Good to have you. Can you Thank introduce you. yourself? Really? Thank you for having me. My name is Shiloh Jewel Adabu. I'm a child of God. I'm I'm a, an only girl of four siblings. I'm the last child. I I am a worshiper, like you said, like every other child of God is. <laughs> apparently, okay. I'm a drama minister, a minstrel, and a counselor. Oh, amazing! That that's like a whole lot in one person. So, how do you like manage all of that together at the same time? Well. I don't think I manage as it were. Well, okay. the Bible says that it is the Lord that works in us, in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So um, I see your, a person's calling and endowment as, as part of like organs of their body working together as one. I, I won't stop to think of how my heart is beating while my liver is working, you know, while my lungs are working. They work hand in hand, different systems working, you know. So when when we focus on trying to live our life for God, we realize that he begins to bring out the different dimensions of us, the different abilities and capacities that he has given us to function with. And wow, just amazing. Which. Okay, uh, looking at all of this now, I believe, like myself, the viewers are too much the way I have questions. Like, okay, when did you start off with all of these that in like right now like you have so many so when did the ministry start with you was it like you just grew up like that or how did it start with you okay well let me say I had a great start in life why um, remember when scripture said uh, me and the children that God has given me I think it was Joshua that said that in scripture it says we are for signs and wonders when you're born into a Christian home, one of the advantages that it affords is that your your parents, your plant spiritually and physically, and I was planted into that kind of home. Both my parents are ministers, they are full-time ministers for almost 40 years now, and they've been in full-time ministry before I came around. So when I came, um, okay, so both my parents had specific and unique um, words, prophetic words that the Lord told them about me before I came. So before I was born, I'm a July born. I always say the story for those who follow me. I'm <laughs> July born, but sometime in February, when my mom still had me in her womb, God told her that it would be a girl child. You know, back in the day, it wasn't, there was technology to check for the sex of a child, but it wasn't, according to my mom, as I, when I was born, it wasn't something that was everywhere. Yeah. Nowadays, when your pregnancy is some weeks old, you got to check for, yeah. for the sex of the baby. So, but God told her, it's going to be a girl. Apparently, they've had three boys. And she shall be called Shiloh, for she shall sing. So my mom bought a new Bible and wrote that prophecy in front of it and kept it. Wow. And then secondly, my other name, Jew L, not Jory, Jew. but Jew mm. L, the yeah. chosen one of God, was the one that my dad gave to me also by revelation that um, this one would carry the power of God. However, her beauty is not going to be of her outward appearance, according to the first Peter, but of the inward man, and she's going to be the chosen one of God. So those names, the reason why I went to all that two entries, because those names preceded me. So as soon as I was born, my parents began to tell me um, the amount of revelation they already had about me and my destiny before I came. So when I began to run, I began to run first with the knowledge that they had received before I came. So I remember that Bible was the very first Bible I took to the same camp as a kid. I messed it up. <laughs> I drew things into it. But as soon as I could begin to read, 
I began to use that Bible, and my parents kept telling me the story. They said we should call you Shiloh. That's what God said for you. We'll sing. And it was like night and day. It was very vivid. As soon as I was speaking, I also began to sing and receive songs. And um, I think in songs, I speak in there's always one melody or the other in my heart, pictures, imagination. So that was where um, singing, writing songs, writing drama, imagining drama, putting myself into character and you know, getting to feel people and know people and realizing the, the part of teaching and counseling and mentorship. That's how it began to unfold. So gradually, when I gave my life to Christ early as well, by God's grace and because of the kind of family I came from, got to begin to walk with the Holy Ghost and then begin to get revelations and my own destiny begin to, beginning to unfold to me now beyond what my parents had yeah. seen and live into that. So that was it for me. It wasn't as if it was pretty much before me. Wow. Okay. That, that's, that, that's big deal, I would say. All, all right. But uh, although there are many things I would say that Lord packed into you, but we're going to pick one of them okay. as our discourse for today, which is the, the worshiper, uh, which I believe your mom, right? Shiloh. Yes. What she was saying. Yes. Okay. So but we're going to pick that. Now, what really is worship? What is worship? <laughs> All right. Worship is what God created creation to do. Okay. Okay. The Bible says that in Revelations, it says, For thou, and, and in a very famous song that we all know how to sing, For thou created all things for thy pleasure. Mm-hmm. All right. And he created us to do his will, to please him. And worship is putting that lots of definitions that we can give worship and myself in the course of teaching and sharing about worship over the years I you know use different words to describe it but for now I'll just basically say that worship is prioritizing a particular being or thing okay. uh, veneration and when you prioritize something it becomes a color it becomes the lens by which you see life and live life. So worship is a lifestyle. That, that's why worship is a lifestyle. So whatever thing dictates why you do what you do, you're worshiping that thing. So as worshipers, everybody is a worshiper, let me tell you. Okay. Even unbelievers are worshipers. They're just not worshiping God. So what do they worship? Many people worship many things. Many people worship the trends. Many people worship fashion. There are people who worship their own selves. The Bible says concerning some people that their stomach will be their gods. All right. So whatever dictates your preference, even if we call ourselves children of God and Christians, mm-hmm. remember the Bible says our friendship with the world is to God, and it says you cannot worship God and Mammon. You cannot serve God and Mammon. So every time, even as children of God, we should begin to check ourselves. What is dictating what I'm doing? Okay. Have I come to a point where even as a minister, I'm ministering so that people will receive me? Mm, okay. Do you get it? How, why am I dressing well? Why am I speaking the way I'm speaking? Is it for people? Because remember I got to a point where Aaron was no longer leading the people because of God. He was leading people because he wanted to be accepted. Mm. And that was why he created the golden cow. Yeah. He, he became creative all of a sudden. He, <laughs> he was, you know, the second in command and he, he left God, left. The, and he was their leader. He, he kept on being their pastor. He didn't stop being their pastor, but he led the people straight into what they wanted. Idol worship, away from God. So worship is the act of putting something as a preceding factor, preferred factor, adored factor in everything you do in life. So where where melody comes in is that music, sounds, um, just like words, mm-hmm. is a vehicle upon which you can express, a means of expression, it's a kind of language. Expression. Yes, and music is one of the most powerful languages that we have in humanity in the world, not even humanity alone, creation. Mm. Remember I said that's what God created Created creation to do, birds, trees. There's a research, I studied zoology in school and we did a little bit of plant biology and there's this scientific research that plants grow better when you place sounds to them. So in the western world 
you may have something like a, a greenhouse. And I know I'm digressing, but I'll come back. And then in the greenhouse, you're culturing tomatoes or flowers, and then you play sound to them. The research so shows that they, they grow better and they fruit better. So sound is very powerful. So one of the ways of expressing the person you prefer, the person that, or the thing, or the one, or the being that dictates what you do and why you do what you do, one of your expressions is sound. Okay, okay, so what you're saying basically, right, is that the, the worship is not first of all this song exactly, or the sound. No, it's not. Okay, the sound and the song is just to express. A means of expression. Okay. And it's wow. very foremost these days, to the point that when you say someone is a worshiper, what you first think of is the kind of melody, the kind of voice, hmm. is because music is powerful. Music is powerful. Okay, okay, before we continue, we are going to go on a short break, but I believe that you are getting blessed already and you are following us. But we will be back after the break. Welcome back, viewers at home. This is still God on TV, showing on STEMA TV. And we still have our host with us, and we are still uh, discussing on the believer and worship. Uh, before we went on a break, you were saying some things about how that God actually created everything for pleasure, for worship. Now, so are you, what are you, are you trying to say that in quote and unquote, everything God creates or created is a worshiper? Okay, now, looking at it from that perspective, if, does that mean also that everything sings or everything has a sound they offer to God? Actually, yes. And I'll, I'll first of all say that everything is supposed to be a worshiper, okay. supposed okay. to worship. Yes, because not everything worships. And yes, everything has a sound. Everything has resonance and resonation. It's making a sound. I remember where the Bible said um, that the heaven pours forth speech, said day after day, said there is no place where their voice is not heard. Mm -hmm. So a day has its own sound. So I remember one of the songs that God has given me, which, which is a number. I remember one of them says that I carry creation to worship. And actually came out of uh, an encounter where I, 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 I saw that vision and every time I think about that song it just comes back to me. It comes back to me a lot of times to realign me towards the purpose of why God has called me to sing or be a minister, a worship minister. And I, I saw myself as a little child and I was taking a walk uphill. It was a mountain but it looked uphill. I was barefooted and I was taking uh, walk up here. Now, as I was going through a kind of meadow, going through the path before I got to the hill, different things began to follow me. Humans being, human beings began to follow me. Plants, I saw trees begin to move. Mm. Butterflies, insects, animals, stuff began to follow me. And then I went up that hill. And when I got up that hill, I saw it was a lot of variety of creation. And there on that hill, on the top of that hill, I had two choices. If I turned to them and made them, they would bow to me. But the in, in, intention of God at that time was that I should point them towards God. So I saw that I turned to all the, the people that were downhill looking up to me and I pointed to him. And then that song came forth, I carry creation to worship. I carry creation to worship. So the truth is that creation was supposed to worship God. And so the extent to which, now we, we are the prince of creation. God created us to domain and dominate over creation. That was the first intention before the fall. Now, for every human being who can align themselves and align everything and the, the affair of their lives, their emotions and the things that occur in their lives, as much as we can align those things to worship God, as much as our lives worship God, you will realize that more of creation will bow to you. Your atmosphere will begin to bow to you. Your finance will begin to answer to you. People will begin to, of course, fame will begin to come. Not because you were looking for them, but because yeah, yeah. you are aligning your being to serve and to worship God. Okay, so now I would like to ask another question. Now, what then is the importance of worship? Now, what I mean by the importance of worship, I don't just mean 
singing right now. I, now, singing included, but not just singing. Now, what is the core importance of worship? Why should I worship? Okay, first, worship is important because that's my purpose, that's your purpose, that's why God made us. Okay. And if something is out of purpose, then it's useless and worthy of trashing. Mm. Okay. If you get something for a reason and it's no longer working for that reason, you throw it away. You don't get your phone, for instance, to be a decoration. Your phone can't just wake up and say, I want to be a cop. <laughs> yes, yes. The moment it doesn't work for the function to which it was created, trash it. you trash it. So if a human being wants to avoid trashing, then our lives has to be an expression and effulgence of worship of God. Okay. People have to look at us and have a resonation of worship. So that's one of the importance of worship. Okay, now, now that okay, t towards God, uh, that's the importance. Now, I believe that people watching right now would say, okay, to me, like, okay, we know there is such a thing as prayer, fasting, fasting, meditation. Now, worship. Now, this includes sounds and songs. Now, what is the importance of that to the believer? Thank you very much. Now, first of all. I'd like to say worship as a lifestyle, not as a song. Like I said, worship is not slow song. Mm -hmm. Worship is a lifestyle. So if, if you're a worshiper, you're, if you're a worshiper of God, that's what you do. Your, your prayer is part of worship. Mm -hmm. Your evangelism is part of worship. worship. So if you can list all the importance of prayer, studying the word of God, it's part of worship. It's also the importance of worship because worship is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are talking about worship in expressing to sound, um, I'd like to encompass the importance by saying that whatever draws you closer to God brings the realities of God to you. Mm. So whatever you can get from God, if you do sounds the way it should be, because sounds, like I said, is a vehicle. So it, as, as a worship leader now, in terms of sounds, let me okay. streamline it. I know that's what you want me to do. <laughs> as a worshiper, a worship leader, um, and a sound priest, what we're supposed to do as children of God is to curate and receive sounds that were sourced from heaven, sourced from God, and bring them da down to the earth. So, and not composing. Of course, you can compose. Yeah. Do you understand? You can compose, but it has to be from the place of the throne of God. So if truly you get that sound from the throne of God, the moment you release that sound or that song, everybody and everything who listens to it begins to be catapulted to that same source where it comes wow. from. So whatever possibility, this is interesting now, whatever possibility can be gotten from around the throne where that sound came from can also be replicated. Wow. So if healing can be gotten from the throne, then it can. And you release sounds wow. from the throne, then people can be healed under the sounds. If if depression can dispel, of course there's no depression around the throne mm -hmm. of God. At all. That means that people sit under your sounds. <laughs> if truly you have aligned yourself mm -hmm. and the song, because a song can be from God. If you don't sing it with the same atmosphere of God, it's not going to give you the same thing. Wow. It might give you goosebumps, but no results. But it won't give you the same results as the throne. Mm -hmm. So if I as a worship leader, as a human being, I'm aligned as a worshiper in my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Do you get okay. it? My okay. speech, my thought mm -hmm. patterns, my my as a young person, yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not falling into sin. Yeah. I'm living a life of holiness. When I now release a sound that comes from heaven, it will give me the results of heaven. So as a believer, it can, you can listen to sounds and scriptures will open to you. You can mm -hmm. listen to sounds and get direction of what yeah. to do. Personally, maybe because that's what God called me to do, I hear the Holy Spirit many times through sounds. I remember growing up, <laughs> I remember growing up and when my parents would give me an instruction and I'm like, oh, why now? There's this particular song I'll start hearing in my spirit. Mm. And that song, I was thinking, but it says something <laughs> like, I remember when the Bible said that if they are if they are rebuking a child and his rebellion, mm -hmm. say he will perish suddenly without that's the song, your paranoid <laughs> that and it's it's a very groovy. Yeah. And my heart would be <laughs> I'll be hearing that song every single time. So I grew up, I thought it was just ordinary, mm -hmm. but I didn't know the Holy Ghost was communicating with me through sound. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? You can get direction 
if an aligned person sings a song from heaven, you are going to get alignment to the Holy Ghost. You're going to be closer to the sound of God. God will speak to you more. Healings will happen. Deliverances will happen. The scriptures will open up. You'll understand scriptures better. And of course, the general one we like to say, you will gain traction in prayer. When you're struggling to pray. Yeah. You know, some people think it is, um, it is a babe level to pray with sounds, but really it's not. If it's your thing, rise with it. You, you cannot get to the throne room where you no longer need the vehicle of sounds. That's fine, but don't let anybody make you feel bad that you can't start praying until you play sound. Play your sound, or God. Pray your play prayer. Play it in peace. Play it in, uh, play it yeah. in peace. So, so that's one thing sounds can do. Wow. Worship songs can do. They help you gain traction. You're before the Father and you enjoy yourself. Wow. Amazing. I, I believe that you have been following us to this point with your mind, like I said, and with your soul and your spirit. And we are going to go on another break right now, and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to God on TV, and I am still your host, Aladinika Oladili Joshua. All right, Ma, uh, I want you to... Uh, you've talked about the importance of worship and sound to the believer. Now, let's look at the unbeliever now. Now, what is the importance of this worship to them? Okay, sound has a wonderful convicting power to or for the unbeliever. And it's a challenge for me and for every sound priest or worshiper out there to stop shying away from the power of the gospel in our sounds. We can't sit down wanting to clone our songs to sound like the world or to sound worldly, not in beats, no, beats is beats, please. That's what I'm talking about. Or you know what I'm talking about. Um, let's begin to see the power of the sounds that are God-given. If they are God-given, see, the spirit of the Lord does not know your mindset or your belief. Mm. One of the work of the Holy Ghost, among the tripartite ones that were mentioned in, in the New Testament, it says it convict the world of sin, convict of righteousness, and uh, there's a third one I do not remember right now. But yes, it convicts of sin. The, the Holy Ghost convicts. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is in our sound. Yes. It should have the power to convict. Do you get it now? Yes. People can legit begin to have relationships with the Holy Ghost because they listen to our sounds. I think that we've not gone to the point of harnessing that enough. And as worship leaders, we just think that we're to be for the four, four walls of the church and for just people who are Christians. Whereas our sounds can go out there and do the work of convic conviction and healing, of course, because healing is not just for the children. Yeah. Healing, is, healing is one of the magnanimous gifts of God. Indeed, indeed. Okay, now, the for a believer now. Now, I you you mentioned something about prayer, the traction in prayer and all of that true worship. Now, where what is the connection between uh, worship and warfare? Can can you briefly just mention <laughs> something about that? Just this one wants to take me home. Okay. <laughs> all right. One of the things that I do is prophetic worship. Okay. And um, I remember watching Prophet David Obala on set here talking about how that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which is true, which is very, very true. Now, like I said, sound are vehicles. Melody is a vehicle. Music is a vehicle. You know, pretty much like drama. Mm. You can sell anything you want in drama. You can sell. You can sell good stuff, you can sell bad stuff. You can see a movie and all you come out from the movie is that you can have the best of both worlds. You can be yeah. a bad person and a good person. Any, any concept whatsoever. So in the same vein, we can communicate love through sound. Okay. And at the same time, we can wage warfare. Through sound. Through sound and in worship. All right, so, so yes, and we see the examples with Jehoshaphat. We see the example with um, Joshua. We see the example with Gideon. Because remember that at Gideon's um, war, at his battle, what they carried was what? Horns and pitchers. Mm. And what did they do to the pitchers? They broke them. What happens at the breaking? Sound happens. Mm. So it sounds that there's a warfare. My, my father had a revelation, and he called it the warfare. It says the, the, the war songs of the prince 
of glory. The war songs, there's a warfare sound that the Lord raises that if, if your producer, your instrumentalist, I tell my instrumentalist this all the time, there's a way you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost and how you play, how you strike the kick, how you play your bass is aligned to a particular pattern. Mm. Of warfare, wow. and when you release it, warfare literally happens. Oh, okay, okay. Now, I have another question here, but let me quickly ask that for the sake of time. Now, according to John chapter four, it says we have to worship in spirit and in truth. Now, what does it mean to worship in spirit? I know a lot of people watch, watching right now are like, okay, um, when you start speaking in tongues and the song, and it's just flow with the, you know, the beat and when. Now, I want you to probably quickly just explain that to just clear their mind and their doubt, you know that. Okay, what really does it mean to worship in spirit? Okay, worshiping in spirit and in truth, when you remember that the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth, you realize that when he said worship in spirit and in truth, he's just giving, um, he's also, let me put it that way, giving double emphasis. So the in spirit saying there, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. Okay. The Bible says that you can't do anything out of faith. It says faith pleases God. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's talking about what God has promised you. So anything that is not inspired of the Holy Ghost is not spirit. Mm, and is okay. therefore not acceptable to God. And that is why it says that generation comes and now is where in those that will worship will worship in spirit, spirit and in truth. So if you're if you're if you are walking in the spirit, you will live in truth. Mm, and okay. truth truth is not what is truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus is truth. Yes. The Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when he says his spirit and truth, he's simply saying they will worship God mm. in the Holy Ghost mm. and in Christ. Christ. Mm. So if you're not born again, you cannot effectively worship, worship the Father. That's what Joshua was trying to say. So first of all, you want to worship God, get born again. Get born again. Give your life to Christ. Because any other way will not match up. Mm. It's going to sound like drab it's like you want to make music but you're making noise mm. and then after you have been born again constantly be under the influence and the leading of the holy ghost then because the holy ghost is the one that searches the deep things of god he's the one that knows the melody god wants to hear at that time and then he inspires you and gives you that expo yeah. you know what god wants to hear and you release it to him it's not until the song is fast the song is slow the song is let me tell you something sounds can be emotional and you will fall under sounds mm -hmm. michael jackson used to sing okay, so before. well yeah. and people fall <laughs> under the anointing oh. music is emotional enough yeah to make people for, fall to make you fall so so it's not until when, when people fall that's not the indices that you've worshipped mm -hmm. the indices that we have worshipped is that that's what the holy ghost is saying at that time you you know, I've been um, in times, I won't, I won't take too much time, but mm -hmm. I just want to give this example because it's, it's really powerful. And I'm learning in ministry and in life, even though I'm still learning ministry, to, to know this part. Mm -hmm. There's a pressure when you go to meetings, especially believers meetings, where people want you to chant. Mm -hmm. I hope you know that praying in the spirit is not the same thing as praying in tongues, yeah. same as worship. Yes. The Holy Ghost can give you utterance that you pray in your in English. It is yes. still praying in the spirit. Yeah. And praying in tongues is still praying in the spirit. In fact, sometimes we pray in tongues, our minds are not there and mm. we're not praying we're in, not the spirit. in the spirit. Yeah. You're not in the spirit, you're tonguing. In the flesh. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> so, so doing things according. So I get to the stage and I can literally palpate the expectation of people. They're expecting me to do some some high sounding, high rising songs, you know, mm -hmm. and some songs. And I always tell people, some people want to start worshiping God, but and Bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to start with hunger songs. <laughs> Who does that? You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to start with hunger songs. Uh, it, that's another protocol for another day. But I realize sometimes people want to do something. And as a worship leader, you might be carried away by the expectations of people, people. And then you just give them the song they want. And that, that's not worshipful. Wow. They may quick. You know, sometimes you'll be singing. Mm -hmm. And people just sing. When you not sing one harass song, they say, yeah. <laughs> it's the lie. Yes. Wow. Sometimes it's that common, old, ancient song that the Lord wants to hear. Sing it. Mm -hmm. If you keep at it enough, 
Wow. You see the results of the presence. Wow. Okay, for, for the sake of time, I, I believe people watching right now, they actually want us to like keep going and keep going and keep going. But you know, we are still within time. So I'm just gonna take one more question. All right. Now, this is the question. For young people who are sensing the call of God upon their life, uh, as relating to worshiping with sound, um, you know, leading people to worship. Now, what would you say they should do? Because uh, uh, certain people, I've met certain people, and the first thing they care about is the voice. Like, my voice must be sweet, you know, and all of that. So what would you say they should really, really care about when it comes to worship and leading people to worship? Okay, as a minstrel, which is a name that is common in our day, Mm -hmm. I just think top title cha. <laughs> but I think the first thing that you should pursue is your relationship with God. Mm. And very close next to it is service. I didn't start by being on flyers and billboards. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've not even begun the journey that God intends for my life. So I'm not hyped. I started by serving in our church choir. And I still serve in our church choir. You want to, you know that God is calling you to be a worship leader. Before you climb the stage, do you know that God? You know, there are times I don't even prepare for meetings. I'm not saying don't prepare for meetings, mm -hmm. but there are times, sometimes I'm just more concerned about whether the Lord is happy with me in that time. Because I don't know what, it's the height of hypocrisy when you are taking people to meet someone you're fighting with. I'm sorry, you don't know. What are you going to do there? Eye service? And it's, it's, it's a tendency of worship leader. So the first thing is know the Lord. Pursue your, your, your devotion, your Bible reading, your personal work with God. And then the next thing is service. Don't run away from service. Stay in your local church and be active. Serve. You don't necessarily have to be the lead vocal, mm -hmm. just serve. So I'll work with God and service. That's what I would say. So I, I think I'll place in this hierarchy intimacy, then service. Yes, intimacy wow. and service. Uh, okay, okay. For, the for rest the sake tends of time, to unfold from to, to, Just with time, they come. Wow, I'm amazing. All right, for the sake of time, I know you want us to just keep going and keep going. We, we will not be able to do that today, but probably in another session where we have our around, we can go further. But uh, before we go, I wanted to just say a word of prayer for people who are sensing this call upon their lives and they don't really know how to do it and, and all of that as well. All right, let's, let's pray in agreement. I'm going to strike my hand towards the camera now as we pray and I will believe that the hand of the Lord will touch you. Father, we submit to you in the name of Jesus and we ask that Holy Ghost, everyone who's at the sound of my voice, who's watching this video today, you will engulf them with your atmosphere. Amen. You will engulf them with your spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I rebuke every depressing spirit. I rebuke every oppressing spirit that's over the lives of people. I rebuke everything that's hindering people from entering into their purpose and God-given destinies. And I say, I summon you out now. Begin to fulfill God. God's purpose for you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your eyes be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, I pray for all whom you have called to be sound priests, even in this generation, whom you have called to release melodies that will that will draw the hearts of people to your love. I ask, oh God, that you find them. Amen. I ask, oh God, that you anoint them. Amen. I ask, oh God, that you will not spare them in the dealings that will make them worthy ministers, even of the gospel Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask that you encourage their spirit and their heart Amen. and that you put oil upon their head Amen. that their, their head will always be with oil and they will always be clothed in white. Amen. Thank you faithful father you, in Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Okay uh, I, I believe some people actually right now are going okay where can we get your songs and probably listen to them. Is it possible for you to just drop something for them? Okay yes majority of the sounds that were released so far is on Telegram and YouTube. Telegram you'll find on um Shilo Joel Sounds and on YouTube Shilo Joel Adaluma. Uh, we're going to upload more on Audio Mac by the grace of God and grow in time by God's grace. But right now you'll find them on Telegram and YouTube. Oh, all right, all right. We are going to drop the link below and where you can get them below in the um, in the caption. So please do well to to check them out and drop your testimonies in the comment section. I'll see you on another episode. God bless you. Yeah.